Ag PhD full episodes and more are now available on Acres TV, the newest ag platform connecting you to fields of information. Look for us on watchacrestv.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about mobile versus non-mobile nutrients in the soil. There are a lot of things going on down in the soil, and you're probably not a soil scientist, but even if you are, it's kind of neat to get a refresher on some of these things. With soil, it generally has a negative charge, and it's trying to attract positively charged nutrients and hold on to them. Well, if soil is a negative charge and a nutrient is a negative charge, like nitrate nitrogen, for example, those two negatives can actually repel leaving nitrate nitrogen to move pretty freely through the soil. All right, so real quickly, I'll just give you a list of what we feel are the most leachable nutrients. Nitrate is number one. Now, it's not nitrogen, it's nitrate. Nitrogen in the ammonium form, that actually will hold in soil pretty well, but nitrate is leachable. Sulfate is also leachable. Boron's pretty leachable, chloride, and then the other one we always throw out there is salt. And while you might not think of salt as a nutrient or anything like that, we like mentioning this along with those other plant nutrients because there are many farmers and quite frankly, many gardeners and acreage owners who have excess salt levels. Well, if you can just make sure you have good drainage in your soil, you can flush that salt through because again, salt is leachable. Well, when you think about how farmers are putting nutrients out in the soil, look at nitrogen as a great example. If they're broadcasting it across the soil, maybe they're lightly tilling it in, it's gonna move down. It's gonna get down into where that root system's at. The plant doesn't have much problem finding these nutrients that are more mobile. Okay, but there are immobile nutrients in the soil. Phosphorus is by far and away number one, but zinc is also pretty immobile, copper is pretty immobile, and like in our soils where our ground is frozen for five months out of the year, we barely get any rain and we have really heavy soil, we consider potassium fairly immobile, at least on our farm as well. With these nutrients, if you don't place them right, it can be a real problem. Well, it sure can. We like to see those nutrients put deeper into the soil. So on our farm, oftentimes we're placing those nutrients down eight inches deep or 10 inches deep, down where the root system is going to find them in the growing season. When you've got all those nutrients in just the top inch or two at the top of the soil surface, if it gets dry in the summer, which let's face it, everywhere at some point it's going to get dry, Plants need water to pull those nutrients in. If there's no water in the soil, they're not getting those nutrients. So we like seeing them down deep when they don't move very well. And here's the other thing. When you have nutrients that are immobile in the soil, there are a lot of people that'll just lay them on the soil surface. Well, now if they are on the soil surface, guess what? If there's any wind erosion or rain erosion, those nutrients go away with the soil. So now, number one, you've lost a whole bunch of money off your farm, and number two, it could potentially create an issue in water, lakes, rivers, streams. If those nutrients get in there, you might see more algae blooms and just more issues in that water. Well, there is a big difference with one nutrient versus the next. Some are pretty mobile in the soil. Others are not very mobile in the soil. We would prefer to get those non-mobile nutrients down deeper in the soil to protect them, to protect the environment, and to make them more plant available. And with the nutrients that are leachable, those ones we want to be really cautious on. We probably want to spoon feed them through the growing season to make sure we don't lose them. The only unfortunate thing, if you do a great job with all these plant nutrients, you might actually see some more weeds because the weeds will benefit just like the crop will. But we'll tell you how to stop our Weed of the Week coming up later in the show.